Hello everyone, I have with me Katie Salashvili here at the Qatar Masters 2023. Hi Katie, how are you doing? Hi, I'm doing fantastic. So, uh, before this event, we have seen you in World Championship, Global Chess League and also in Chess Olympiad Batumi, I guess. And now you are in Qatar. How are you feeling? It is fantastic to be here because Qatar Masters uh, is a tournament that uh, you have to visit as a chess player or as a journalist uh, once in your lifetime and I'm so happy to have this chance to be here. Uh, as you know, this tournament is one of the biggest chess events. Uh, top names in the chess are playing Magnus Carlsen, Hikaru Nakamura and you're, you being a part of this event, how are you feeling? Well, it is uh, it is very interesting because um, um, you are part of the team who is creating this event for the players like Magnus Carlsen or Hikari Nakamura, Anish Gir and many, 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 many more. So it is it feels very special, and I think it's a lot of uh, um, responsibilities as well. For the viewers who are watching, uh, could you explain us your role here? My role is uh, press, I'm a press officer here and I also manage the social media so whoever wants to publish about this tournament I'm happy to share the photos, videos, information and also there are a lot of journalists, local journalists or international journalists coming here so I'm giving them the accreditation uh, and of course we have here a local press so, or chess press who are working here so we are working as a team together. Uh, you also have a YouTube channel? And also you're creating content here like uh, can you tell us uh, do, do you like producing content around chess uh, how is it yeah okay i have to be honest my youtube suffers big time because i'm not for publishing as much as i should do but i'm very active on instagram i like to use that platform for my chess uh, i like to tweet as well and i'm mainly streaming on twitch most of the time so this kind of tournaments are the tournaments where you have to create the content uh, and I'm in the, in the middle of this one for for now for this event I'm not working on my own channel but I'm working for the official uh, uh, YouTube uh, of the tournament so we have created a lot of interviews a lot of videos uh, and I think that's uh, uh, something that can be uh, very interesting for viewers to watch so uh, before any tournament now you are the press officer and also so you handle social media for the tournament how do you prepare well to be honest i prepared before any tournament before it started so very basic things you do some research about the event itself uh, and also what's the history of the event who won uh, previous years uh, and then um, you do some uh, background uh, so search uh, research of the top players uh, statistics and so on and so on that's that happens before the event but uh, then when it comes to the tournament of course this media and all, everything that happens uh, that is posted in social media is just created on a spot uh, so then I usually just uh, get ready uh, for, for the day uh, and coming up with a plan what I want to do there are some things some videos and some ideas that I'm doing in most of the events but then uh, you have to think right away what's happening and you should use the moment so for that I need to be fresh I need to be well rested and that's exactly what I'm doing before the before the day starts to just to get ready not to have too many things in my head and to have a lot of energy here to work so what do you think are the challenges of being a press officer in this tournament the mood of the jazz players <laughs> they are so moody i understand this because uh before the game the players are very concentrated they uh they don't want to talk i understand that part uh, and after the game, uh, when you ask something, all they want to talk is chess moves. And all I want them not to talk is chess moves because I have no idea what they are talking about. You can follow all these moments. There are like one or two key points that you can ask, but then they start to analyze the games and then you are like, your, your eyes is going somewhere else. So that's the hardest part, I think, uh, to deal. And also, uh like i can i can see see the difference between uh the interviews earlier like some years ago was a different approach from the chess players they were a little bit hard to approach and sometimes a little bit rude in the answers but now uh 
I think everyone understood that social media is such a great tool to advertise your job and to get more and more fans and sponsorship. So they, the players are very open, they're very nice, very kind. Um, I have not had any struggle here to get interview from anyone. As your job as a press officer, I think uh, you'll be handling the media who is covering the tournament as well. Uh, in a chess tournament, I think media is also very important as uh, the chess games. How do you find the fine balance between how much uh, to cover, allow the media to cover the tournament and also give some uh, privacy uh, to the players? Uh, well, uh, it's a it is so important to have media uh, in the chess world because that gives us more uh, viewership, that gives us more sponsorship uh, and we ca people can see how cool the chess game can be, how cool the chess players are. Uh, so that's very important. If, if someone asks me, I would allow media to be in a playing venue all the time. Uh, but we have to also just uh, mm, uh, keep in mind that the players uh, might get distracted. There have been a lot of cases when the result was uh, um, uh, was decided because of someone uh, interacted with a chess player and uh, that didn't end it well. So uh, if we have some sort of like ethics, like how to uh, how to deal when you are at the chess tournament, like how to keep the distance and so on and so on. I think it's possible to, to have media longer time, but the problem is that we have sometimes uh, people, journalists coming from the different sports uh, and um, uh, they don't know the specifics of chess. <laughs> and they are sometimes getting interacted by the, with the players. For instance, I had a very funny situation uh, in, in Georgia. We invited a uh, camera guy who was professional. He was recording the uh, videos of the president of the country and the prime minister and so on. So he was a professional. And it was a chess tournament, a Georgian championship. The games had started and he wanted to get the footage and he was looking and couldn't find anything catchy, you know. And he went to one of the Green Masters and told him while while playing can you take that move back and play again for me and the guy was like what and i was like oh my god just let, let's let's just leave and he didn't understand what was the problem to make this move for him to catch the catch the video so uh this kind of moments distract players um and uh, players don't like it but i think by the time uh, we will have more and more rules for the um journalists too and um uh, yeah. For instance, one of my job here is to tell journalists who are coming, who are very new to the chess world, uh, where, where is the balance, <laughs> or they can cross the uh, lines. I mean, what do you think some of the rules which uh, media has to follow, and also chess players have to, you know, cooperate with the media to make it uh, make a event a successful one. Uh, yeah, th th there are some events, for instance, when players uh, have to give the interview. Uh, no matter what what the result is, or there's also this kind of not written rule that when a player wins or makes a draw, they are more willing to give the interview. That's what I really like, uh, and uh, uh, I think from player side, it's just it's just natural naturally uh, getting at the point that they want to be on camera, they want to be uh, shown uh, as, as a very successful chess player. Like, just imagine if you are interviewed by the media, it means that you, you have done something. So that's already a very good thing. Uh, and I, I think I would put more regulations for the, for, the, for the media how to keep the balance. So can you tell us, can you tell us about uh, your team? Like, uh, like, how many people do you have and uh, how do you produce more content here in this tournament? Uh, so here we are, a group of uh, 10 people, including the uh, commentators. We have three commentators, usually at the chess tournament. So there are two commentators, but now we have three commentators and it's more energy, uh, more lines, of course, more stories. Uh, and behind the scenes, there are a lot of guys who are uh, working on the videos, editing and putting the broadcast together. That's the that's the media team. Um, and then we have also a team of the um, social media, uh, local uh, uh, social media, uh, which manages the Qatar Masters uh, profile on uh, Twitter, uh, Facebook and Instagram. So those are also two people 
Uh, and yeah, that's all. <laughs> like, where do you get the energy to manage everyone? Like, you have to manage the live stream and uh, produce content, also uh, the media, and also be in the tournament hall every day for the nine nine days. How do you do this? Well, first of all, you need to have a good shoes <laughs> because you have to walk a lot. That's the first thing that I always keep in mind to have a nice shoes. Uh, and about the energy, I don't complain about my energy because I have plenty usually. Um, and I, I mentioned earlier that it's very important to have a good rest before whatever you do. And then the energy comes with, uh, with the, the content. Like when you interview someone and you have something good, you want to do more and more. So this is exactly how your uh, it's, it generates, yeah. In, in the end of the tournament, I will be very tired, but for the moment, I am uh, I'm hyped. Talking about interviews, recently interviewed Magnus Carlsen. How is it um, interviewing Magnus? Oh, it's it's very nice actually. It's very nice. The latest interview we did uh, in the playing venue, and he was worried that the players might uh, be distracted by the voice. So his voice is so low <laughs> that in the social radio it was a lot of jokes about that. And his voice is very soft. Uh, but uh, I, I like to interview him. I really like to interview him because he. Like when you ask the question, he always tries to answer answer you in a way to uh, get something catchy. I, I like it. He's very smart uh, and he's very honest. Uh, he tells what uh, he wants to say in a smart way. So this is very, very, very nice. Um, and when he wins the games, he's extra nice. <laughs> so <laughs> I think we all support him to, to win and then to give us uh, nice interviews. And yeah, he's, he's, he's very, very open. Also, um, uh, another person that I enjoyed very much to interview here several times was Hikaru. Uh, and he's also very open, open to talk. He's very open to uh, walk uh, quite a distance to get here at the um, fun zone um, and yeah yeah I think they they are just uh, fantastic uh, what is the one thing you like uh, being the press officer or uh, like uh, social media manager what is the one thing you like about your profession free snacks <laughs> and the cakes <laughs> no um, what I like is that I am closest to the top chess players at the moment when they finish the game. Mm. So this is the moment when you can feel the tension, you can feel these emotions and you're the first person to ask the question. So it's, it's really nice. I like that uh, part of my job. So yesterday was the rest day. <laughs> what did you do? Yesterday was a very nice day actually. I wish to have every day rest day here because it was very interesting. Uh, first we went to the um, uh, Olympic uh, Museum uh, and uh, it, it's very interesting to see the other sports, how they're improving and uh, growing uh, in their sports. Uh, and then uh, at some point, uh, you always imagine where chess is, how chess got at this place and where it can go. Uh, and yeah, I hope that uh, at some point we will jo join the Olympic family and uh, chess will become one of the Olympic uh, sports because we deserve that. Uh, and there is a lot of emotion there is a lot of things that people can enjoy uh, and that was the first thing uh, yesterday that, that I ha have done um, a lot of chess players were there too and the second part was also very interesting we went to the uh, to the safari uh, and had a chance to ride the camel for the first time ever it was the greatest experience. I was smiling so much that in the end of the day I had a headache out of the emotions. And yeah, I, I loved yesterday. Uh, <clears throat> now I want to talk about yourself. You yourself are a uh, woman grandmaster. Uh, how do you balance between uh, playing chess and also uh, this profession of yours where you don't play chess but you are in the tournament, you handle other things? Yeah, there is no balance. I don't play chess. <laughs> In like, to be honest, uh, I have played chess like few times a year. I like to play team competitions uh, because I love to have this team spirit and chess is the individual sport and we are missing very much. Like everyone is like very selfish, wants to win all the time. And when it comes to the team, like there are four or five people who ha has the same goal to win. So I, lo I love the team competitions leagues and the uh, uh, like, for instance, the latest tournament I played was the world 
team Rapiches Championship and I had a superstar uh, team, teammates uh, and the, uh, the thing about the balance is very hard. It's very hard, I will not lie about that. Uh, when I made the decision to uh, work for chess uh, but not to be a chess player uh, I knew that um, that was that was my decision because if you want to play chess at the professional level then you have to uh, you have to work very hard and uh, if you don't work hard and if you don't have uh, some good results then it's better to invest your energy in something else if you were not associated with chess what other sport uh, do you like uh, I, I like I like sports, but I don't see myself in any sport because I think I'm not a very sporty person. Uh, uh, if I had a uh, like some extra magical things, I think I would be a tennis player. Mm. <laughs> but I really like to watch football. Uh, I like to watch rugby as well. Uh, we have quite nice uh, rugby team in Georgia. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's it, I think, that uh, I, I, I watch. And recently I started to ski. That I like, yeah. Okay. That I like very much, but I don't see myself a professional ski, skier, skiing. <laughs> I <guess. laughs> yeah, but I enjoy yeah. as a hobby. It was fantastic class. Yeah. How did you get into chess? I mean, uh, if you could tell others, like, how did you start your chess journey, and also how did you switch? When did you decide that you wanted to become a, a professional, like, uh, other than chess, like a manager, like around the chess tournament? Uh, so I played uh, I played my first tournament when I was eight years old. Uh, I took second place in the women category and we were only two women. So <laughs> that was my first medal. Uh, and uh, I also had a coach, but I think I started to, to learn chess way earlier because everyone in my family knows how to play chess. And it was the tradition of my family to have chess board always open and when we had uh, some family gatherings or we had some special guests coming in our house uh, my grandmother loves chess and uh, she was always playing chess with the guests um, uh, so that's I think when I learned how to play chess because I don't remember how I learned uh, chess but uh, first tournament I remember it was when I was eight years old uh, and the last tournament was also um, quite successful year for me I was seven 18, 18 years old and at that year I achieved my title, Women Grandmaster title, also became the Georgian Junior Champion. I think it was in 2011 when you got the Women Grandmaster title. Uh, I don't remember. <laughs> it was way long yeah, yeah. ago actually. Yeah, probably. Uh, yeah, it was at this point when I achieved that title, it was not such a big deal for me because mm. I had more plans to do because you never want to stop there when you're a professional chess player. Um, but then uh, some things has changed uh, and I made decision to leave chess uh and uh, started my university for four years i was like totally out of chess one event that i remember was in india in chennai the world championship match uh, carlson and anand there was like some side event and i played there uh, because it was a perfect getaway from the exams <laughs> in in autumn time uh so yeah and after that i was i was gone from chess for good really for like several years had my job and so on and and there was one event that I just accidentally got invited <laughs> or involved. That was 2017 World uh, World uh, Cup in Tbilisi. Uh, I don't know what happened. They just needed a person who speaks English and who knows chess. Uh, and I got invited. And from that tournament, then out of nothing, uh, my schedule was already uh, planned for like half a year. I had commenters, commenters, commenters all this half a year and at the beginning I really enjoyed that. I was like, okay, let's let's try. I was missing very much my chess friends and seven years later I'm still doing this. So yeah, that's the story. Can you tell us about the World Championship as well? You were, uh, can you tell us your role as well as like, uh, how was the whole, whole experience? Oh, that was the experience that I think is one of the most important for uh, for my career um, uh, because it was very emotional for me uh, to be in the middle of two uh, 
two people who are fighting for the world championship title. Um, and yeah, up to this point, so many months pa passed when I see the videos from that tournament. I'm getting very emotional still. Um, and sometimes I couldn't believe that, like how I can be emotional because my role there was to moderate, uh, moderate the uh, press conferences. Um, and uh, you know, it was of course other, other things that you, you, you have to do when you're at the part of the project and I was doing interviews too. Uh, I was also opening the first uh, moves mm. and introducing uh, the special guests who were coming um, and so on and so on. Uh, but the most uh, important parts were um, the interviews after, after game interviews. Um, I learned so much about these two two players, actually their personalities, how to approach them, and how to uh, uh, be uh, nice to them, so not to make them uncomfortable during the interviews, because uh, it was it was very difficult for them. It was not only one chess match or few chess games. It was first of all a huge prize uh, on the table, and it was uh, I think World Championship matches are up to like country level like they they are very much into it's a lot of pressure on them so i wanted to be the least person to put the pressure on them um and i think we did a great job three of us together doing these uh, uh interviews and we had so many very honest answers from um ding a lot of people were asking me how i was dealing with the Jan's answers but i never ever felt like bad about his answers this is this is him and that makes him like his uh, actions makes Jan a phone issue so you have to accept that and uh, I found several cases uh, quite uh, quite uh, you know funny uh, uh, but uh, yeah it was it was very interesting experiencing overall and I think that um, I, I grow up also like personally to uh, to, to be there uh, and the hardest part was the last part of course last inter last interview yeah. last press conference when I had to announce the new world champion and both players had emotions <laughs> one very positive emotion and one very sad emotions and I felt at some point that if I uh, if I allow myself to cry there there will be like everyone crying there so i was like you have to be strong you have to be strong because a lot of people in the audience were crying and you yeah. could see tears and you could see players also even in Dink tears the oh yes 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 he was and when you are so close and you see yeah. tears coming it's um yeah you you want to be strong but they're always you cannot deal with that. So I think that was one of the best world championship matches with that sense that we had all the emotions, we had all the crazy results in the games. And I'm so grateful to both of them to, to, that, to do that for the chess ones. <laughs> that was a great story. And uh, how do you keep, uh, keep on improving yourself after one event after another? I mean, uh, like, how do you do that? Oh, that's actually very interesting because uh, uh, we have we have the participants of one event and traveling to the other event, and very often we have the same players. Yeah, uh, of course we want to see new young players come in and winning the tournament, some new names, some new faces. Uh, uh, but basically, like we have these top grandmasters at most of the events uh, and uh, I think the Im impro improvement is uh, basically to uh, to do the uh, research before you do your next job and uh, to learn what's what people want to see from you what they want to uh, you to uh, give give them I think that's the that's the way so you just uh, listen what they want and in social media it's actually uh, there are a lot of comments some of them are negative comments of course and some of them are positive comments but some of them they are just very good advices and you can take it so yeah i think that's the way i wanted to ask you about that as well i mean you produce a lot of content which is on the internet also you get a lot of feedback which some might be positive some might be negative some might be constructive criticism like how do you uh, take the feedback i mean uh, positive comments and also there might be some negative comments how do you take both of them oh, very well <laughs> 
but I reach this point right now. Earlier, I was worried so much about the negative comments. I think I'm very lucky not to have that much of the negativity as my colleagues are having. Uh, some of my colleagues have way too much, um, but also. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm doing like very, you know, low-key things, uh, not going to uh, too much, uh, you know, um, in social media to annoy people, I guess. Uh, and about the uh, negative comments, I was more sensitive earlier. Uh, and a lot of people were telling me like, oh, don't mind, that happens to everyone and uh, we hired you because we want you to work but somehow you still get affected especially when you see that live you are doing something and in my case mostly it's like when I'm working with the Green Masters uh, and uh, sometimes they have even engines open and uh, when they are analyzing the, the, the uh, uh, games and the lines you cannot add more you can't anymore you have to repeat the same or you have to agree and somehow people think that you are uh, not strong enough to keep up with them uh, which um I don't believe it's true, it's just like you have to do the work in two people. One person can do this, another person has to do that. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think I gave too much time and the attention to the negative comments and I was uh, not paying that much attention to the positive comments and now I give a lot of, a lot of attention to the positive comments of course uh, and the negative comments. Yeah, sure. <laughs> you can you can write whatever. I might read my note, but you can you can waste your time for for commenting something negative. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Uh, one final question: uh, What is the uh, what is your future plans after this tournament? Do you have something planned, or like uh, what do you have in future? Oh yeah, a lot of events are coming up, and I think uh, I have some plans up to. January 2024 so it's always a lot of events and the other things is that I like to keep myself open for some new opportunities uh, and uh, what I really enjoyed recently was the Oli youth olympiad it was very interesting to work there because all these kids from around the world they were very active they knew me uh, from the streams and from the commentary so they were very happy to see me and they wanted to be always on camera they were not uh, running from camera and they were giving me very good uh, answers uh, so I will do several youth uh, tournaments uh, uh, for upcoming month uh, and uh, uh, there yeah that's that's uh, pretty pretty much it so um, there are also several events that I'm, uh, I'm doing in Poland for instance uh, it's quite popular nowadays um, uh, chess to be part of some conferences or some uh, expo or some forums uh, and I'm very happy to be rep chess representative at this kind of forums Kitty thank you so much it was lovely <laughs> speaking with you all the best for your future endeavors Thank you. Probably I speak too much, yeah? No, no. no. <laughs> Thank you very much Thanks. for uh, giving me the chance to speak. <laughs> Thank you so much.